Hi, I've recently been working hard on getting the lighting project completed and I'm starting to get some of the PCBs through. Um, so we're going to assemble one of the boards up today. This is one of the relay modules and I've got PCBs from JLC PCB. So let's have a look at what these look like. So this is the relay module and the idea is that I'm going to have various PCBs with different functions in this exact form factor and the idea is that there's going to be a main board and you can plug in four of these PCBs into the main board and build up sort of a custom controller for each room or a couple of rooms depending on uh, how many lights you want to control. So all of the designs for the daughter boards are identical in terms of footprint so we've got a 10 pin header and one mounting screw and that will plug in and screw into the main PCB and then the main PCB is just a bit bigger and it's got some extra connectivity on it. So today we're going to be looking at the relay module and this is just so that you can turn a light on and off or more specifically in this case which is what I want to use it for is in the bathroom we're going to have a humidity sensor and when you're using the shower when it gets to a certain humidity it will turn on the relay and turn on the extractor fan. The general setup that we tend to use in the UK is that we have the extractor fan in the bathroom attached to the main light so when you go in and turn on the light it also turns on the fan which can be slightly annoying in the middle of the night when you don't need the fan um, so I'd like to independently control that and using humidity makes the most sense. So the overall schematic is pretty straightforward for this relay module. We've sort of got the same layout on every device in terms of a few things so we've got the 10 pin header um, which has the same pin uh, configuration on each of the four uh, modules on the main board and then what we've got is a pair of resistors which tell the main board which module is plugged in. So in this case we've got a 1k and a 10k resistor and that will tell the software that we've got a relay module attached. If we go to the dimmer uh, we've got a 1k and a 1k resistor so it can read the voltage there and realize that it's a dimmer module and the same for some of the other ones. Um, and then we've got um, some general supply decoupling, so for the 12 volt rail and the 3.3 volt rail. We've got some status indicator LEDs. Um, and then the actual main part of the PCB is just an open collector style transistor um, with a resistor here just to uh, limit the amount of current that reduces the transients on a MOSFET because you're basically driving a capacitor. Got a pull down resistor here, a, uh, a flyback diode for the relay so that uh, when you turn off the transistor the back EMF from the relay doesn't destroy the MOSFET then it just goes off to a three pin terminal block. So that's what we're going to be assembling today and I've got various components from LCSC so a bunch of relays um, and my favorite type of uh, terminal blocks these are really good if you're gonna ever order some terminal blocks and you want them fairly cheap I highly recommend these ones from LCSC here's the part number and you just change the number at the end depending on how many terminals you want. So this is the three terminal version, but they're very high quality. They've got the rising clamp, so there's no chance of you missing the wire when you're screwing down the terminal. So these are very high quality and relatively low cost in comparison to the types of um, terminal blocks you can buy from Farnell. So what we're going to do is just assemble one of these up after we've had a little look at the PCB itself. So here we've got the Relay Module PCB and I've gone for the Immersion Gold finish with the blue solder mask and every PCB in this particular project is going to be blue so we're not going to be going for a multicolour finish like Julian's Vocoder project um, but I think this looks really nice and you can see here we've got slot here to maintain extra creepage distance for what could be potentially the main side of the PCB and our extra low voltage side although we've got quite a bit of separation anyway this just helps if you ever get any liquid or goop on the board uh, to stop the voltage tracking across to your separated extra low voltage side. And this is of course a two layer PCB because the cost advantage is so good. Uh, I don't think there's much difference between a one and two layer PCB. There's a small incremental cost for four layer PCBs and for the main board I have selected a four layer PCB so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. It's in production at the moment and should be arriving next week. So um, let's just check to see if the relay fits in. That's the only part that's new. Uh, I didn't check it properly, but uh, yeah, it looks like it fits nicely into the PCB. So I'm going to start assembling this up now and see how it looks. And today we're going to use the Felder 
ISO core rosin activated solder and this is the alloy with a bit of silver in there. In the soldering test this was a very nice solder to use so I thought I'd use this one on these boards today. So I'm using my usual technique of applying a little bit of solder to each pad so that when we place the component we can tack it down and then solder the other side. So I've decided to assemble just these final few with paste, just to make things a little bit quicker. I've decided to assemble 10 boards at once. So I thought we'd actually test the Quick 857. Uh, I'll do a proper video on it shortly, but uh, this is the lower cost Quick hot air soldering station. It's slightly slower to heat up than the um, the more powerful Best BST863 soldering station, but it's uh, sort of half the price and a very nice form factor. Right, so now that we've done all the surface mount parts, we can start putting the through hole parts in. So we'll start with the terminal blocks. And then finally we've got the pin headers to install facing down so that they plug into the mainboard. Now if I already had the mainboard what I could do is I could plug these into the headers that they're going to plug into and then place the board on top and everything would sit in the right place but unfortunately uh, that board is still being made so the easiest thing to do with pin headers is just to solder one pin and then tip it on its side and just make sure everything's vertical and then once you've done that you can re-solder all of the other pins. So yeah, what you want to do is you want to put it on its side and you can see this one's not at a right angle. So uh, because I picked one of the ones in the middle, I can happily touch these end pins. Then you heat that pin up with the solder on and adjust it until it sits straight like that. And then once you've got all the pins nicely lined up, you can just whiz along and solder all of the joints. So that's our 10 relay boards completed. It's probably more than I need. Uh, but I bought components for 10 PCBs and it's probably easier to do it now than it is in five years time when I can't find the parts. So I'm not going to clean these up just yet. I have got an ultrasonic bath arriving from Banggood so when that arrives we'll be able to see how good that is at cleaning up the PCBs. Uh, but this is the general form factor for each of the modules that you'll be able to plug into the main board and I'm quite excited to receive the main board and see how that looks and then see how these modules plug in. So hopefully you found that video interesting and useful and until next time, thanks for watching.